Come on, let's give Jesus some praise this morning. Oh, come on, it's Sunday. You didn't come all this way to hear from me. Here, we here, came here to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give him a shout of praise like he deserves it. I'm so, I'm so grateful that you decided to come to church today. You made it here. You know, I believe that so much we're doing right now in church, it's just amazing. So many incredible things. The discipleship classes, over 700 students right now. Give it up for them. They're doing a great job. If you're in Holy Warriors, great job. The young adults are on fire. 400 young adults showing up on Friday nights. They could be in the club or partying, but they're here lifting up the name of Jesus. The list goes on and on. Just the great things that are happening right now. You know, you're doing so many great things, but this moment right now is your turn. Some say it's my turn. It's your turn to receive truly everything that God has for you this morning. You know, you, you have, uh, it's been maybe a long week. Maybe it's been a heavy week. But that's why we come to the house of God, to lift up Jesus' name, but also to surrender everything we have to him and to receive a word from God. How many need a word from God this morning? We need him. So I want to say thank you for being here. Everybody online, thank you for being online. We're going to pray right now, but as we do, I feel like it's really important to bring up that just this week, you know, we heard, we got news of a very horrific tragedy that happened. A young girl by the name of India and her, her two cousins were killed in a tragic car accident here in San Bernardino. And she was only 19 years old, but she got saved here at the Way World Outreach. She was serving here at the Way. This is her, look at her, just beautiful young girl. She was serving our nursery department. You know, and we did not know, no one knew that this would be your day. But we just wanna take this moment to pray for her family, but also rejoice knowing that she is in heaven with the Lord. They're all, they were all saved. They all gave their life to Jesus. They're all in heaven right now, worshiping God. And so, but this is nothing that we wanna ignore. We wanna lift up the family right now. So if you can, pray with me. Bow your heads. Father, we lift up India's family. God, we don't, and all the other families, Lord, that have been affected. This is not news that anyone is prepared to hear. But we know, God, that you are a loving and a comforting God, that in this moment you can embrace them right now. We lift them up to you. We pray that you would cover them, strengthen them, be their legs, Father, when their legs are weak, God. Be, be their arms when their arms are heavy, God. Be, Lord, comfort their heart when their heart is hurting, God. And in these moments, Lord, us as a church family, we're going to be there for them. We're going to be there to support them. But, Lord, there's no one that can comfort their heart like you can, God. So we pray that you would cover them in this moment. And we pray, Lord, that in this time as we receive your word, you would speak to us. We surrender all to you this moment. And we ask and we give you permission, God, to just open our hearts, to do surgery on us this moment, this Sunday morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Right now, we're in a series in discipleship. And this series is, a, is teaching us how to really walk as a disciple of Jesus uh, how many have been, been enjoying, you've been enjoying this series so far, it's blessed you. We've heard from Pastor Marco, we've been learning a lot. And we're really making the distinction and learning what it means to be not just a believer in Jesus, but to be a disciple. There is a difference. As a matter of fact, you'll see that studies will show a large majority of people in the world, they say they believe in God. A lot of people believe in God. Even when we were out living the way we used to live, living for the world, uh, living in sin, many of us probably said we believed in God. You know, the Bible even says that demons believe in God, but demons aren't saved, they can't get saved. So is believing in God enough? Well, there's a little more to the story. And this is where this word discipleship comes into play. And the word discipleship, disciple, means to actually be a student or a follower of Jesus. So I don't just say I believe in him, but now I can say I follow him and I live for him. 
And there's a difference. So today we're going to look at what is, because there is in the Bible, there is a reward for people that say, I want to follow Jesus. Not just in what I say, but in how I live. How many want to know what those rewards are? Because there's good things for you and I. For anybody that says, I'm ready to follow Jesus Christ and to give him my whole life. There's a reward for you today. So now, but in life, there's also costs. And these costs are inevitable. We pay these costs depending on the lifestyle that we choose to live. Whether you choose to live for God or you choose to live for the world or wherever you choose to live for, there will be a cost that's directly related to the decisions that we make. But again, just like there is a cost, there's always a reward for those that choose God's will for their lives. Either way, there's a cost in life. So we might as well pay the cost that comes with the reward. How many are with me on that? I don't want to just pay in life and no reward. I want to, I want to pay the, the cost that comes with the reward. Look at this scripture in Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 46. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure, a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. And it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and he bought it. This is the life that God has for you and me. See, the life, living for God does, is not boring, is not dull, is not gonna ruin your life, but as a matter of fact, it's just like this story. When you discover the great treasures that God has for you, the future, the new beginnings, the life, the blessings, the joy, the freedom that God has for you, you will give up anything you have to get a hold of that treasure. And this is the reward that God wants to give his children today. So I believe that in this room, that we are expectant and we're ready to receive the rewards God has for us. Is anybody with me on that? I want that. I want the reward. I want the life. I want the, the, the new beginnings. So, but like anything that comes with the reward, first there's a cost. There's a cost for this lifestyle. And there's a cost in life in general. Life is not just easy street. Either we're gonna pay living for the world or we're gonna pay living for God, but there is a cost for whatever lifestyle you decide to live. So I wanna first talk about the cost. But there are two costs I wanna identify. Number one, the first cost is the cost of living apart from God's will. What is that? Well, there's something, there's a cost to it. There's, it comes with a, a price. It looks like this, maybe emptiness, maybe confusion. There's a lack of fulfillment. There's no peace. There's wasted time, regret, lack of hope, self-centeredness, broken relationships, loss of compassion for others. There's shame and guilt. And the list goes on and on and on. This is the price that we pay when we decide to live apart from God. And we may think, well, there's a lot of good in there too. Maybe there's a lot of, a lot of fun. Maybe there's pleasure. Maybe there are all these things, but none of that amounts to the price that we pay at the end of the day for living apart from God's will. See, when we reject God's will for our lives, there's a heavy, heavy price. When we live apart from God, we can't produce anything good. You know that there's, there's, this is why, how sad would it be that we could gain all the great things this world has to offer and find out that none of it would make you happy at the end of the day. Remember that, that feeling when you got that new car? That lasts for like three weeks. And then the car gets dirty you gotta put gas in the car just like every other car. You gotta change the tires. It starts giving you problems. Then your new car is an old car now. Your, your joy fades away. Or maybe you got that dream job, this job that you wanted, you, you've been fighting for, you applied and you finally got it. And you get in and you realize this is not as good as I thought it was gonna be. 
There's a lot harder work involved here. There's a lot more effort. This whole glamour we, we used to think it was starts to fade away. Or maybe you thought, when I get married, I'm gonna be the happiest person in the world. And then you got married. And it was all the problems. Come on, don't laugh too hard. Maybe your spouse is sitting right next to you. But you realize all the things that you thought were gonna give you joy and make you happy, they didn't. They begin to fade away. You know, the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? You know that celebrities have come to find this out. There's a famous quote from Jim Carrey. He says, I wish everybody in the world would get all that they've ever dreamed of so they could find out that it won't make them happy. You know, there's many of us that are still striving for material things or achievements or degrees to make us happy, but it will not fulfill us at the end of the day. See, a life apart from Jesus will never lead to a, a satisfying life. You will always be empty at the end of the day. At the end of that journey, at the end of you getting all that you wanted, there will be lack of fulfillment, lack of peace, lack of joy, emptiness inside. You'll still carry the anxiety, the fear. Your body will give way to, to time. And, and eventually at the end of the day, you realize, I worked so hard for things, yet I don't have a relationship with God. What good was any of this? And one day we will all pass away and we'll die and we'll face the Lord and we'll have to give an account for the life that we lived. This is the cost of a life apart from Jesus Christ. There's a price to pay either way. You know what it says in John 15, verses five through six. Jesus says, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. That's good news. That means that anybody who lives with God, anybody who has a relationship with him will, be able, will produce good things. You'll be able to do good. Fruit could be like anything in life that, that has value, that you maintain, good relationships, people you invest in. There could be breakthrough you see in your family or in your walk. The fruit, these are good things. When you're connected with Jesus, you can produce good things. But the opposite is also true. Jesus says, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Another version of that scripture says, you can do nothing good. There is no good that comes from a life apart from Jesus Christ. I don't care what resume you show me. Give me the best resume possible. Give me the resume that has fame, fortune, money, love, attention from everyone in the world. But if that life is apart from Jesus Christ, then we've gained nothing. There is no good that comes from it. It says, verse six, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. And at the end of our lives, when we reject Jesus Christ, we face our eternal judgment. What good was a, a life, maybe 80, 90 years of money, of great things, if at the end of our life, we throw it all away and face eternal judgment? It's not worth it. It's a cost for what? Temporary pleasure? It's a cost for a high that runs out. See, some of you get high and that's the one thing that you just don't wanna give up because you, you're still chasing the next high, chasing the next thing, chasing the next weekend, and that weekend is always over and you're still chasing and you're still chasing and it doesn't make you happy. This is the cost for living apart from Jesus. Stop chasing the world when God has a plan for you and he has purpose for you and he has life for you and he has good things for you. The world leaves you empty, but Jesus never does. See, without God, we have an inability to produce and maintain good things in life. Maybe you had a good relationship for a while, it goes bad. Maybe you had a good season for a little bit, it turns bad. Maybe you started some good habits on your own and they, they end up fading away. Nothing truly good can last when we live apart from God. This is the cost of, not, of choosing not to be a true disciple, of not following Jesus. We pay this price. But also, there's another cost, and this is the second cost I wanna to introduce to you. You have this option. The cost for accepting God's will and becoming a disciple. Wait, you mean following God comes with the cost too? Sure does. But it looks a little bit different. This is what it may look like. It may look like sacrifice. 
It may be commitment. It may be surrender. It's the cost of trust. Anyone ever had to trust God when it was really hard to trust? When you did not know how you were gonna make it, maybe you had to trust him with your family instead of trying to do it all on your own. Maybe you had to trust him to make ends meet at the end of the month when the bills are piling up and the account is running dry. You had to trust God and he's come through. Maybe you have to trust him right now with a doctor's report. You're trusting him with your health. That co- that's a cost that we pay. It's a trust cost. Maybe the cost is in repentance. Well, we repent and we turn away from an old life and give him everything. There's a cost of endurance. Endurance means to keep going when things get hard, not quitting or giving up when it feels like everything is piling on you. Come on, that's a cost that it requires from you a lot saying, I'm gonna keep going even though it's so hard right now. The cost of serving. Many people today are serving. There's many of you that are volunteering today. Many of you are, 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 are serving. Maybe you served today or this week or you're serving right now in service. And that was a cost from you. Maybe you had problems of your own or you had needs of your own, but nevertheless, you said, I'm still gonna put people first. I'm still gonna meet needs of others. And if I do that, I know God's gonna take care of my needs. But that's a cost, serving when it's hard. There's a cost of devotion. Devotion is spending time with God. That comes with a price. And what is that price? Maybe you gotta wake up a little bit earlier in the morning. I mean, no, that's, uh, come on, somebody. For someone, that's like, that's it. That's, that's the price. For some, maybe it's patience. This is your cost. You, some say, well, I got real quiet when I said patience. You're dealing, you, you, you have you, the cost of not, you know, getting upset when someone cuts you off on your way into church. They took your parking spot. They saw you with your blink around. They took your spot. Come on, or maybe you're the one that took the spot. And then you're walking in church with them. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Come on. It's okay. But it comes with a cost to remain patient. Use some self-control. Uh, someone on the freeway, they cut you off, and you want to say something, you want to show them something, one of your fingers. That comes with a cost to re- use some restraint and just bless them. Lord, I pray that you will bless that driver, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless them. Give them extra gas, Lord. Lord, preserve their tires, Lord, on their car. Hallelujah. Maybe that's what you got to do when someone cuts you off next time. Just pray for their tires. Not that they would blow their tires. That pray that God would protect their tires. Come on, you're getting the wrong idea. These are some of the costs of accepting God's will. Persecution is another cost. You may be persecuted by friends or family that are giving you a hard time for coming to church and living for God. Why are you always at church? Who do you think you are? Don't forget where you came from. Look who this is. Mr. Mr. Religious Man, Mrs. Religious Woman. And they say all these things about you. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what cost we pay. It does not compare to the cost that Jesus paid for you and I to be free from sin and for you and I to have eternal life. It does not compare. But living for God comes with its costs. It's a cost for following God's will. When we choose God's will, it may appear like you're giving everything up, but really you're gaining so much more. We must be willing to pay this small cost now to uh, to reap a large reward later. The Bible says in Galatians, do not give up in, in doing good because at the right time you'll reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. It's saying this, I know it's hard, I know it's costing you a lot, I know it's taking your time, I know you have to drive out here on Sunday or tune in on Sunday morning, I know you're committed to give your time, you're sacrificing so many things you can do right now, but don't give up in doing good. Don't give up in sacrificing for the Lord. Don't throw in the towel now, because at the right time, someone say the right time, At the right time, you'll reap the harvest of blessing. You'll be on the receiving end of the reward. You will get all the great things that God has for you, but you cannot give up when things get hard. We gotta be willing to pay the price. I wanna show you this video, but before I do, I wanna give you the context of this video. 
there's a person, there's a guy, he's a, he, he goes on missions trips and he actually went to missionary trip in China. And in China, the church is not like this. They don't have big churches where they can gather and worship freely. All churches are underground or they're hidden. They have to remain that way because they can get uh, thrown in prison or they can, they can re- receive just a, a massive a, a penalty for worshiping God or spreading the gospel. So this missionary goes and preaches to these underground churches. They had a, he had to go to this church and, and many of these people, they were crammed in a small apartment, 20 of them crammed in a small apartment. They had to sit in that apartment for three days just to wait for one church service. They traveled 13 hours to get there, extremely hot in there. They're sitting on a hard wooden floor. Many of them just don't even have a Bible, but they want to go to church and hear from God. So he begins to preach the word to them. And he had a few Bibles, but he didn't have enough for everybody. There's 22 people in the room. He begins to hand the Bibles out. He gives the Bible to everyone. And one woman he gave the Bible to, he notices that she gives her Bible to someone else. And she begins to recite word for word everything that he's reading. He says, let's turn to 1 Peter. And she begins to recite it. And he asks, how did you do that? I've seen you do that. And she says, well, we have to memorize the scripture because it gets taken from us. And he said, what happens if they find out that we're here? What happens if they see us? They say, well, you'll, you'll just be deported, but we'll go to prison and we'll serve a three-year sentence for worshiping God. And he asked those 22 people in the room, he says, Has anyone in here ever been to prison? 19 of those people raised their hand. They're in prison with scraps of the Bible, one or two pages that they they cherish and they memorize the scripture. And this woman said this, they may take our Bible, they may take those sheets of paper, but they cannot take the word that's hidden in my heart. Talk about a cost that they pay to worship God, to come to a church service. So the church asked him if they could, if, if they could, he could, uh, so he asked if he could pray for them. And he said, how can I pray for you? And I want you to see what their response was. And I want you to see what he then tells them. Go ahead and take a look at this video. Well, after three days, you fall in love with these people. And when it was done, I said, how can I pray for you? I'm going to go back to America. and You guys have been just so wonderful. How can I pray for you? They said, you know, Wayne, you guys can gather like this whenever you want to in America. We can't. Could you pray that one day we'll be just like you? And I looked at him and I said, I will not do that. Big incredulous eyes looked at me and they said, why? (laughs) I said, because you guys rode a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than an hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat not only here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people don't often come back. In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles and you memorize them from pieces of paper. I will not pray that we become like uh, you become like us, but I will pray that we become just like you. How many are praying today that you would have that same heart that nothing will stop you from receiving all that God has for you? How many are today are making that commitment? You're saying, I don't care if I get persecuted. I don't care what comes my way. No offense. Come on, no bad week, no long weekend, no sin. Nothing is gonna stop me from living for Jesus. I'm gonna give him everything, all of my time, all of my commitment, my future, my heart. After all, Jesus gave you everything on the cross the least we can do is give him our hearts in return. Is there anybody in here that is saying, I want to give Jesus my everything? 
Come on, give God praise if you're ready to give it all. Could it be that we're just not willing to pay such a small price in comparison for the large rewards that God has for us? Could comfort or convenience, even procrastination, just putting it off, maybe I have next week, maybe I'll do it next time, could these be the things holding you back from receiving the reward that God has for you? Don't hold anything back. He has great rewards for you. How many believe that this morning? I wanna share with you some rewards. Let's get to the good part. Here are some of the rewards for being a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm only gonna share a few. And there's so many more than what I'm gonna share today. But the first I wanna cover is this. Victory over your past. Victory over your past. Come on, the people that have a past in here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you are grateful that God gives you victory over your past. He's called us more than conquerors. And, it, and when you, it's one thing to be called a conqueror. It's another thing to be called more than a conqueror. How can you be more than someone that conquers all the time? Here's how. Because God is the only one that can go into your past and turn all of your losses into wins. He turns all the things the enemy used for evil and he turns them around for good. He turns your past into a testimony for someone else to learn about and to be set free from. Only God can do that. That's the reward that God gives us that live for him. He can take care of your past. It says in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, it says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. That is right there a reward in itself. For someone in here, maybe that's you, and you do not look forward to the future. You look ahead to the future with anxiety and fear. It's time to let go of your fear and anxiety and to receive the peace of God in your future again. It's time to get a heart full of hope again. When was the last time you felt hope rising up in your heart? When you woke up in the day, you were excited about what God was gonna do that day or that week. I believe this is part of the reward of what God has for you, to be excited about your future again. Come on, this is a good thing. I know this is true. The best is yet to come for you and I. How many believe that today? He says, I forget the past and I look forward to what lies ahead and I press on. Somebody say press on. See, it comes with the cost. It doesn't say I stroll forward. It doesn't say I sit around. No, I press on because it is a fight. It does come with commitment. It does come with perseverance and endurance. But why do I press on for this? To reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. See, God has a reward for you on the other side of the storm. He has a reward for you on the other side of your commitment on the other side of the price, on the other side of the fight, there is a victory for you and breakthrough is right around the corner. How many believe that this morning? It's true, receive it. I wanna share a story with you. His name is Ruben, he's actually here today. Ruben, raise your hand, can you stand up for me real quick? I didn't ask him to do this, but this is Ruben. He's in church today, give him a hand. I'm gonna share his story. So Reuben, from, the chant, from what I got to hear, he came from a lifestyle of selling drugs, partying, drinking, living in sin. How many know what we're talking about? He's not alone, right? Well, someone, someone's like, well, that's me. Well, he was invited to a church service one day and he decided to accept the invitation. And when he accepted the invitation, he was maybe reluctant, maybe he didn't really wanna be there, he felt out of place. But there was something the guy was talking about on stage. He began to share a story that sounded just like his. And that guy began to share that he came from a lifestyle of drugs, that God set him free. And it began to resonate with Reuben. And in that moment, he knew that God was calling him and God wanted to set him free. So what does he do? Reuben, finally, he surrenders his life to God. And he surrenders everything that he was dealing with in that moment. 
He goes to the altar. He accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord. And, and not only that, but they baptize him that very same day. I think we got some pictures of him right here getting baptized. He was like, I, I don't want to get baptized. I don't have clothes. They were like, it's fine. We got clothes for you. He's like, well, I guess I got no excuse now. So he gets baptized, gives his life to the Lord. But this is what Reuben said. This is his own words. He said, I began to backslide. I began to drift from God. It was like in, in, in moments, in little decisions I was making. By the, by, by after a long time, I began to realize how far I was from God. After I gave my life to him. And why? He says, because I didn't have discipleship. There was no one. I didn't have anyone to disciple me or to mentor me. I was a believer, but I wasn't a disciple. So he said this, over some time, he began to go back to selling drugs. He began to do this. And then in a moment, he began to hear from God and God would not let go of him. God snatched him out of the darkness and said, I got a call for you, Reuben. I got a purpose for you, Reuben. I got great things for you, Reuben. I got a ministry for you, Reuben. I got people you're gonna reach, Reuben. I need you to surrender your life to me. So all in a moment, he says, that's it, I'm done. I'm getting rid of all these drugs. So what does he do? He goes, opens a bonfire in his backyard. He throws all of his drugs in there and he burns them all and posts it on social media. And this is what he says, don't idolize money. He says, Mark 8, 36, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? And he writes a message down there for all of his followers, all the people that bought drugs from him. He said, God is calling many of you. It's your choice to answer that call. Now Reuben is serving in ministry. He's here today. He's making disciples. Come on, he's a leader in the church. Come on, and he, come on, and now he's here in the house of God and his testimony is impacting somebody today. Give God some praise. If God can do it in Reuben's life, he can do it in your life too. See, this is part of what happens. This is the reward of surrendering your life to God. God takes care of your past. It doesn't matter if you're a drug dealer. It doesn't matter if you're selling your body. It doesn't matter if you're addicted today. It doesn't matter if you got drugs on you today. Today, God can take you, your past, and deal with all of it and give you a brand new future and give you victory over all of it. That's a reward for those that surrender their life to Jesus. Another way that, another reward is that we reveal God's power and his love to other people. When you make this decision to follow Jesus, it is not just for you, but people around you will begin to see God through your lifestyle. They see God in the way you live. They notice how you're a little bit different. You're a little more full of love, patience, you used to find ways to argue. Now you find a reason to bring up the word of God. Something's shifting and changing. It says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, check out this scripture. It says, we show the power of God, um, the power of the Lord to other people. It is like God has removed a cloth from over our faces. He is changing us. How many want God to change you this morning? You want him to change you. Well, what happens when he changes? says he's changing us, why? So that we become more and more like him. And then what happens? We show how great God is more and more clearly. When God changes you, you become evidence. It's like there's fingerprints of God all over the scene. That God was here. God had something to do with this. This was not your doing. There's no way you could be set free from the drugs on your own. There's no way that you could be full of peace when you're so full of anger and rage. There's no way that you can forgive the person that hurt you. But with God, you can. With God, you can love. With God, you can be free. With God, you can forgive. With God, you can have peace and freedom. With God. It says we show how great God is more and more clearly. It is the Lord who does all this by the work of his spirit. See, you begin to look more and more like Jesus to the people around you. And they may never step foot in a church, but they will see Jesus when they encounter you. The people you love, I believe this, will come to know Jesus Christ when they see your lifestyle and your example. When you surrender, it helps other people around you to surrender too. 
And I'm not saying it's gonna be right away. It may be a journey, but I believe after time, people will come to know the Lord because they see it in you. I got proof right now. I wanna show you, this is, here's an example of someone in our church, he, you may know him, you know Hank and Susie Zavala, our children's pastors here at the Wayworld Outreach. Come on, let's give it up for the kids' world and the, they're awesome. Well, Hank, Hank is a praying father. This is a, 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 show a picture, this is the family. Show the other picture for me really quick. There's, a, there's two of them, yeah, look at, there's Hank with his family. Give it up for Hank and Susie. Well, Hank had been praying for his son to come back to the Lord. So what does Hank do? What he ends up doing is inviting his son to a Bible study. Hank launches a DG just with his family, just with, his, just with those in his home and those that he loves, and he says, will you come to a Bible study? So he invites his son, Bubba, and that's Bubba back there with the, the big old beard and the Raiders, he's all Raidered out. Um, I don't know how they're doing, but praise the Lord. So, so he invites Bubba, and in Bubba's own words, this is, what, this is what he said about his dad launching a DG. He says, my dad actually bought me a DG book, and he asked if I would commit to me as a family once a week. I really didn't want to, but I seen that it would mean a lot to him. So I told him, as long as my mom promises to make dinner every time, I'll go. He's smart. He negotiated there. So they said, yeah. So what happens? We started meeting, and after about a month or so, I began to develop a little relationship with God. That little flame began to grow. And he said, I started feeling conviction from the things that I was doing. And, the, and, the, and it really, and, and the things I shouldn't have been doing. And shortly after that, I found myself at the altar on a Wednesday night service, crying my eyes out while dedicating my life fully to God. All because Hank, Hank's example, Hank's persistence, Hank's invitation, even as a father, maybe this is a message for fathers today, do not be afraid to be the man of the house. Do not be afraid to invite your family into a place to study the Bible and learn from you as a dad. Well, I'm a baby Christian, they know more than me. It doesn't matter, God didn't make them the dad, he made you the dad. He put you in position to be priest of that home. He made you the warrior of that home. If someone tried to break in, you're not gonna send your daughter out there to, to check it out. But if the enemy tries to break in, how can we stand back and let the enemy do what he wants? But, but all I'm saying is this, it doesn't matter if we've been that way for a while, but there comes a time where we have to say, I, I don't care if it's awkward, I don't care if it's weird for me, but like Hank did, I'm gonna invite them, and if they come, I'm gonna open the Bible with them, and what happened to Bubba can happen to your children. Now Bubba said this, I am now saved, I'm now baptized, I'm now a full disciple of Jesus Christ. Not only that, not only that, but now Bubba is working on launching his DG and making disciples at his workplace. Come on, all because one man was obedient. This is part of the rewards. The rewards of being a disciple. The rewards of living for God. People around you begin to change. People around you are blessed and saved. And the last one I'll share with this. There's a reward too for making disciples and that's this, Jesus will always be with us. Matthew 28, 20 says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am with you always. Jesus wants to remind you today, I don't know who it is but I know it's for you. Jesus wants you to remember, I am with you always. See, there's a special relationship that Jesus has with those that call themselves a disciple and that follow God. There's a special relationship set apart for those that are being obedient and walking with the Lord. I'm not saying you're perfect because not even Jesus' personal disciples were perfect, but you are committed. You are enduring. You're not giving up. 
You keep coming back on Sundays. You keep showing up to DG. You take that step to Holy Warriors. You make a commitment to follow God, even though you get persecuted, even though it costs you time, even though it costs you gas. And you're saying, if those people in China can drive 13 hours and wait three days for a service, then I can drive an hour and wait a few minutes in the line to find a good seat. Come on, somebody. This is for someone in here that's saying, I'm willing to pay this price, and I know Jesus will be with me at all times. Jesus is still personally investing in his disciples and his disciple makers. When you make his mission your mission, then he makes his power your power. There's another level of relationship for his disciple makers. So if you've ever been wondering, what's the next level for me? I'm not really growing. Well, ask yourself this, who are you investing in? Because when you pour into others, God pours into you. Maybe it's time to make it not about you anymore and make it about somebody else. But there's a reward attached to that. Remember that God has rewards for you that are willing to pay the price to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Anybody in here willing to pay those those costs today and want the reward from God? So now, I'm gonna ask you this. And please, right now, this is not a sign to leave. (laughs) I want to ask you this. There's two calls I want to make. And you're going to use your phone for this, okay? Use your phone. There's QR codes behind me. And here are the two calls. Maybe you're like Reuben. And maybe you made this decision to follow God, but it's been impossible for you. It seems like you're going through cycles consistently. And you don't know what it is. You keep going back and you keep drifting. And you're saying, man, I need to get locked in. I want to give my life to Jesus completely. Well, maybe it's because you need to take a step into discipleship. We're talking real, raw accountability, life living after God. You need a DG. A DG is a discipleship group. They meet on a weekly basis, study God's word together, study the Bible. You're around friends and family that can help you in your walk. That's what a DG is. And you're saying, I need to be a part of that. I want to join one. Don't be afraid about not knowing anybody. Everyone comes in not knowing somebody. But you're going to build friends and family. And I I promise you this, these are going to be relationships that you'll be able to cherish for the rest of your life. If you're saying, I want to join a DG, then I want you to scan the code to your left. Scan the code to your left. Open your phone and scan that code. You're saying, I'm ready to join a discipleship group. I'm ready to be a part of it. Or maybe you're saying, I'm a part of a DG. Or maybe you're saying, I got family and I want to do what Hank did for Bubba. I want to start a DG in my home with my wife, with my kids. You may feel the pressure right now to do it. You may hear that story. I got, actually, I'll say this. As fathers or as husbands, this is a responsibility that God has given us. The reason, there's a reason why you were born a man, not a woman. Now, I'm not saying women can't do this. But I'm saying this, for the fathers that are here, that you do have your kids and you do have your wife, God has given you a responsibility to lead our homes. And it only comes, it only comes when we're committed to receive that responsibility and make that decision. But I promise you this, God will never leave you hanging. He will never leave you hanging to make that decision and and, and never leave you hanging and not back you up with his power, not back you up with his might. He's gonna give you everything. And now to the moms, maybe you're a single mom in here and maybe you have your kids and you're wondering, I want my kids to learn about God. I want them to be saved. I want them to grow up in the church. This may be your time. This is your responsibility to disciple your kids, to bring them around the table, to put the iPads away, to put the game down for a little bit and say, look, we're going to study God's word together. We're just going to spend 30 minutes right now around the table. We're going to study the word. If you're saying you want to do that for your family, or you want to do that in your home, or even with your friends, even with your coworkers, it doesn't matter who, but God is going to put someone on your heart, and you're ready to take that step to lead a DG, then I want you to scan the code to your right. And we're going to train you. We're going to equip you. We're not going to leave you hanging. We're not going to leave you high and dry. We're going to give you all the resources you need to make this happen. So pull out your phone. Scan one of those two codes behind me. If you're saying, I'm ready to make that decision to take my next step. Come on, it comes with a cost comes with the price. This is not something that we can just stroll through. Because remember, life is going to happen either way. I'd rather pay the cost to live for God 
than pay the cost of life and be empty at the end of my life. There's a price that had to be paid. Before anybody leaves, it's the last thing I wanna leave with you. There was a price that had to be paid for the sin that you and I committed. There has to be a price. We, there is no get out of jail free card when it comes to sin. When we sin, there has to be a price. It's not like we turn a blind eye to sin. And when we sin, the Bible says, what is the price? The price is death. That means we inherit death here in this life, but even after we die, we're separated from God forever because we die in our sin. We live apart from God. But Jesus, the Bible says that he died for you while you were still a sinner. In other words, he paid that price for you so that you can be free to receive eternal life and forgiveness. Maybe you today, you don't know where you would go after you die. Maybe you do not know where you'll end up. Maybe saying, I'm a pretty good person. I think I'll go to heaven. But nowhere in the Bible does it say, if you're a pretty good person, we end up in heaven. The only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. To put your faith in Him. Surrender your life to Him. Receive the sacrifice He made for you. Let your sins be washed away. Repent of your old life and give your life to Him. Put your faith in Jesus today. Like India, who we talked about earlier, she did not know it would be her time, but thank God she was ready. She's in heaven now. She's rejoicing with the Lord. I'm urging you today, you do not know what your time will be. You do not know if you will leave here today. That'll be your last breath you take. But I'm just urging you, be ready. Be ready for that moment. Be ready for that time. And how can you be ready? By surrendering your, surrendering your life to Jesus right now. You can't do it after you die. It's based on what you decide to do right now. So I'm gonna count to three. And if in this room today you're saying, I wanna give my life to Jesus, I wanna be forgiven of my sin, and I wanna know this, if I were to die today, I'm confident that I'd be in heaven. Not because of how good I am, because I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That's why. So when I count to three, if that's you, I want you to raise your hands all over this room and say, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. One, two, three. Raise your hand all over this room. I wanna see your hand. I wanna see you, I see you. Raise your hand, I see you. God bless you, I see you guys. I see all of you guys here. Anybody else, you're saying that to me, I see you. I'm proud of you guys. I see you guys back there, I'm proud of you. I see you guys, I'm proud of you guys. I see all those hands. I see you guys, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you guys. I see you over here, I see you guys. Anybody else, I see you right there. I'm so proud of you, I see you. Come on, praise God, I see you too. And God sees you, most importantly. I'm gonna do one more thing. Before we stand, those that raise your hands, we're gonna do this. We have a team, can the altar team come up here to the front? We're gonna pray with you and we're gonna congratulate you. Can everybody, can everybody stand right now? Everybody stand and everyone that raised your hand, do me one favor. Can you meet one person up here that, that on the prayer team? Make your way out of your seat, come up to the front and we're gonna pray with you. And church right now, we clap, we get excited. Let's applaud everybody that is making the decision to follow Jesus right now. Come on, let's encourage them. Let's encourage them in this moment. excited for every soul that is making a decision to follow Jesus today. If you raise your hand, come to the front. Even if you're in the back, come up here. Today is your day. Everything changes today. Come on, they're still coming, guys. We're still clapping. If they're coming up, we're still clapping. We're cheering them on. Never let this moment become dull to us. This is a precious day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Everyone that came up here, could you look at me really quick? I, I just want to say we're so proud of you. I'm proud of you, bro. It's going to be a new day for you. New day, no, whole new year, whole new season. We're so proud of you guys. You know, we're not going to leave you hanging. You're not just making a decision today to follow God and then go back to who you were. 
Like what good would it be if, if, if we, one day we get married and we get joined to someone and then, and then after the wedding we go back and act single? Well, picture this like a, almost like a marriage, a wedding day where you're giving your life to God and he's yours and you're his and you're not going back to your old you. And we're not saying it's gonna be easy, but we are saying this, make a commitment. Make a commitment to follow God and to surrender everything to him. So right now the person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you, but not just that, they're gonna sign you up for your next step. Your next step is a class, it's called Starting at the Way. And it's where we'll, we'll, we'll help you get baptized and we'll show you how to follow God and we'll give you the steps and the tools. We'll give you the devotional book. We'll show you how to read the Bible and to pray. And these are all things we need and, and we're not gonna leave you hanging. So we're gonna pray together. We're gonna, we're gonna say this prayer from our heart, but we'll all, we're also gonna sign you up for your next step. Are we ready? Aren't we excited for everybody up here today? Church, can you stretch your hands up here? And everybody, I want, everyone, I want you to repeat after me. Close your eyes, bow your heads, repeat this prayer after me. Say, God, thank you so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross and to raise from the dead so that I can be saved. I believe in you, Jesus. I put my faith in you. Forgive me for all of my sin, for the way I've been living. I repent. I turn away from my old life and I give my life to you. I'll never be the same again. Fill me with your spirit, with your power and help me to live for you. Thank you, God, for saving me, for setting me free. If I were to die today, I know I would go to heaven, not because I'm perfect, but because you washed me clean and you made me perfect and you made me a new creation. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, and we all say amen. Church, one shot of praise for all that God did today. Before you go, just with a quick announcement, this Wednesday is gonna be a powerful service. We're gonna continue preaching out of the book of 1 Corinthians, it's gonna be powerful. And this Friday, all the young adults show up at seven o'clock. Ross Johnston, the founder of California Will Be Saved, will be here Friday night at 7 p.m. Love you so much. If you wanna join a DG, go to our foyer and sign up, meet one of our leaders. If you wanna lead a DG, you can go out there and sign up. We love you, God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless, have a wonderful Sunday.